Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. This is what we're looking at today. This is a mag drill by Evolution. S28 mag is the model there. Inch and an eighth industrial magnetic drill. And I've looked at this, but I actually haven't used it yet. Basically, this is exactly how it comes. Got it. It's even got a little coolant reservoir. Oh, I guess cutting fluid actually. Interesting. For those of you who aren't familiar with a mag drill, this is a, a drill with a very powerful electromagnet here that uses, once you plug it in, that will come on and you can turn it off, obviously. Uh, and basically what you have is a drill press. So when you have a big giant piece of steel that you can't bring to your drill press, you bring this to the piece of steel. You stick it to it, you turn the magnet on. So it's essentially a portable drill press. Comes with a chuck here. You can either use the chuck to grab things, which is what I'll be doing mostly, but you also have, yeah, that's three quarter. So you could also put, you know, anything that's a three quarter shank in there, tighten down this, the two set screws. So we're gonna put this thing through its paces and uh, I'll tell you guys what I think about it. Now, I didn't get paid anything for doing this. They sent me the drill for free. This is a pretty valuable drill. I'm calling this a paid promotion, but assured them that I was going to give an honest review. I'm not just gonna give them a good review because they sent me a drill. So let's see, let's see what we think of this thing. So first impression, this thing is very heavy and well-built. In the manual, it says it's um, 26 pounds or 12 kilograms. I didn't actually expect it to come with a coolant system, which goes on there. And then this goes into that hole and the coolant will drip down through the chuck onto your drill bit uh, or annular cutter if that's what you're using. So that's kind of cool. This I find a little unusual. Now, you know, you move it up and down just like a drill press with these. But this here allows you to adjust the, the position of the drill against the movable section there. This is a left-hand thread for some reason. So to tighten it, you, you go left. To loosen it, you go right. And I think I'm gonna constantly be getting that wrong. Uh, why'd they make that a left-hand thread? The other thing is this is wanting to interfere with the coolant thing, which goes there. You can see that's gonna end up being in the way. So that handle needs to be in a different position. Hopefully, yeah, I'm gonna be able to just rotate it like this. Okay, no biggie there. I'll just make up tight. See when I when I tighten that screw it loosens and wants to drop this. Why'd you guys make that a left hand thread? I don't see any reason. I mean it says it right here. Lock to the left, unlock to the right. I don't know. The specs on this thing are impressive. The magnet holds 2,860 pounds. It says it's rated for up to a half inch diameter regular bit and then a one and an eighth inch uh, annular cutter. And it's 10 amps, 1200 watts. It's pretty powerful. This guy goes on there. That plugs in, that's like a shark bite type fitting in there. I guess that's supposed to be easy on and off and it is. I uh, just kind of wish it attached a little better. And then this guy is a guard down here for while you're drilling. So let's start out with this old cast iron weight. So I hit this button back here. Now the magnet's on. And now it, it's not letting go. Shockingly, I don't like the guard. I don't know, it just seems unnecessary. I drill things all the time without a guard down here. 3164, so it's just shy of half an inch. Okay, magnet on. Turn on our cutting fluid. Doesn't look like that wants to run too fast, so I might just be able to leave it wide open. We'll see once it starts. Maybe I actually need to turn it on and have it start spinning before it'll come out. That's probably the case. Drill on.
<laughs> now here comes the cutting fluid. Yeah, I didn't get any, but this is cast iron, so it's not a big deal to cut that dry. But uh, we'll do some steel in a little bit, and I'm going to need that cutting fluid on there. Yeah, that was pretty impressive, actually. I can tell you what, trying to do that by hand, that would have been tough. This is a railroad tie plate. Big, heavy piece of steel. And so I'll tell you, the thing keeps dripping. I've had the... Uh, the cutting fluid off, but it continues to drip little bits. It's a little annoying. You know, if I was using this for hole after hole after hole, I think this cutting fluid dispensing would be nice. I think without it, I'd rather just do it by hand uh, myself like I normally do. Magnet on and drill on. So it went right through. I'm not real confident in this uh, this lubrication system. I would prefer to, to do that myself, I think, just so that I know I'm getting enough lubricant. But again, going straight to a half inch hole on a, on a piece of steel like this, that's pretty good. Uh, it, it goes right through it, no problem. Let's try something a little bigger. Here we have a hole saw. They say that uh, one and an eighth is the biggest thing that this is uh, designed for. Compared to the drill, that actually looks kind of small, but that is a one and an eighth hole saw, hole saw. So that's a pretty big hole. Yeah, that's not going to work for something like this, because immediately it starts slinging the oil off. It's not going to get down to the cut. Well, you could definitely hear the strain on the motor there, uh, but it really cut through that very well. I must say, I'm pretty impressed with the hole saw too. That's a Harbor Freight special. Yeah, that's a Hercules inch and an eighth. First time I ever used that one. So uh, yeah, impressed both. Inch and an eighth, you know, that doesn't look like much of a hole. It is rare you need to drill a hole that big. I mean, I guess it depends on the kind of things you work on, but, but yeah, either way, uh, I'm gonna see what it'll do with something bigger. You know, like, how about two inch? And you know it when you turn that magnet on. Now this is going to be quite a challenge for this because that's an awful lot of torque for this motor to be fighting against. You could definitely hear it with that one. Uh, this is significantly more. All right, what do you guys think? You know, I wonder on camera, that might not look that impressive, um, but having tried to drill half inch steel by hand, that's pretty impressive. To do it with a hole saw in one go, that thing's doing as, as much as I would want it to do. It's rating for inch and an eighth. I mean, it does inch and an eighth, no problem. To me, that's a sign of a good manufacturer. If they say the tool's gonna do something, it's gonna do it all day long, no problem. They're not trying to push the limits with its ratings especially with one of those annular cutters. I don't have one, I'd show you that, but uh, th those are gonna do better than these hole saws will. That thing did just fine. I mean, now it was wobbling around a bit. I think that actually, well, that, that might be the setup. You know, that might be why they haven't rated it for larger than inch and an eighth. Uh, it might also be just the hole saw. These things tend to not be built that precisely. I think an annular cutter would do much better. Yeah, I'm impressed. I need something thicker to drill. Something really thick and challenging. Let me think. Oh, I got it. There you go, right down through the center.
All right, magnet on, drill on. my anvil so what's my impression of this drill um, overall it's it's pretty good I think this is a real machine and uh, this is gonna be very useful this is really useful for like when I'm working on tractors and things something that's too big for me to bring it here in the shop and get it underneath my mill or a drill press you bring this to it you can drill out a stripped bolt something like that yeah I'm impressed it's got enough power I can see why they rated it for an inch and an eighth. Basically, what they're rating it for, it's going to do no problem, and it does. Uh, if you start pushing it beyond that, it will do it. Uh, you might have to go a little slower. It might be a little harder to do. So what don't I like about it? I wish this was not a, a left hand. See, I get it wrong every time. You, you tighten that in order to loosen this thing, and then you have to go left hand to tighten it. I don't know why they did that. Anyway, a little thing, you know, easy enough to deal with. The other thing is, once you put these on here, it won't fit in the case anymore. And this is the kind of tool that you're going to use intermittently. You're not going to use this all the time and want to have it out. Because I'd like to keep it in the case, if it could go in the case with these on there. Uh, but it won't. The cutting fluid system on it, I think, was kind of lacking. I might be wrong, actually. For an annular cutter, it might be perfect. It's not going to work with something like this, because it's got to come down through the chuck, and then it's going to get thrown out up here. It's never going to get down to your cut. I'm used to putting on the, the cutting fluid myself, so I don't have an issue with that. Overall impression, thumbs up. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that's a nice drill. <clears throat> I've had this Evolution chop saw for probably over a year now, and I've been really impressed with it. I don't have any broken teeth, and I've cut quite a lot with this thing. For someone who's not used to this, you just have to kind of go slow and really feel the cut and sort of inch your way through. If you come at this thing like you do a wooden chop saw, you're gonna end up messing up your blade. Not the end of the world, you can buy a new blade, but these aren't cheap. You know, mine has, uh, every tooth looks good on mine. I've cut a lot of stuff with this, and this blade still has plenty of life left in it. I've been really happy with this, and uh, I'm going to do a couple of cuts to show you how well it does. It comes with this rapid adjust clamp that you just flip that down, and then it will screw and tighten. And then when you want to undo it, you flip that up, and it's just a half nut, basically, and allow it to come back. This is for if you have like a pipe or something that you want to hold. Here's a piece of scrap. That's an inch and a half square. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and we'll take a look at the cut. Do it. Go all the way up to your workpiece, put the half nut in position, turn it till it's tight, you're ready to cut. Now check this out. Right after cutting it, not even hot. It's a little warm, but I mean, I can pick the piece up and look at that cut. So if you need to cut angles, say I needed to do something on a 45, you loosen that, you pull this pin, you come up to your 45 degree hole, the pin drops in, you tighten it down, and this will also adjust and allow you to allow you to, to hold it like that. Everything's real heavy, built well. This is a real tool. I expect I'll have this thing for the rest of my life. So I'm kind of curious about something. It goes against my better judgment, but I want to see if I can cut a piece of train track in half with this thing. Train track isn't just mild steel. It's actually work hardened, and I think it's like 1045 steel. That's probably a bad idea, isn't it? I'm going to at least get as much of this rust off as I can, just so I'm not trashing my blade running it through rust. That's uh, that's quite a cut to ask of that. Let's get going. If it looks like it's struggling, because this is going to be the worst part. If it's struggling too much here, I might have to abort. But I bet you it'll do it. I don't know. Let's see.
So I think I just popped the breaker, but I'm pretty impressed. That thing really cut through that. I actually got to the capacity of the blade. It won't, uh, won't cut down any further, so I'm gonna have to rotate that to get through. Yeah, I'm hitting right there again. Look at that. I don't know if it comes across on camera how nice that cut is. It's flat, it's smooth, it doesn't even have much for burrs on the edges. That really is an amazing saw. My biggest complaint with this thing, doesn't really count as a complaint, honestly, uh, is just the capacity. Uh, you know, sometimes I want to cut something that's bigger than that. Eight and a quarter is what will fit in there. You can get an Allen wrench and take this off. You have to lift this up and unscrew it from underneath. And then you can cut something bigger and then flip it and cut it again. So it is possible. But there's another tool that Evolution makes that I don't have, I do plan to get, is one of their circular saws uh, for exactly that purpose. Sometimes the piece of steel is too big for something like this and you can just take the saw and you can cut it like you would a piece of plywood. I'm trying to think, is there anything else negative I have to say about this? I don't think there is. Uh, this saw has, has been very good to me and I would definitely recommend it. Looks like the mag drill is also going to be a nice addition to my shop. I have a project coming up this is going to be very useful for. So yeah, I mean, there's little tiny things I would change. I think that's true of any tool I've ever come across. Evolution, I think, makes good tools that last a long time and really can get some damn work done. So my overall assessment is thumbs up. So I want to thank the folks over at Evolution for sending me this drill. Definitely recommend if you're looking for something like this, I wouldn't hesitate to, uh, to buy an Evolution tool. They make some good quality, heavy duty, impressive stuff. All right, guys, I hope you found this useful. We'll see you on the next one. All right, so get this thing back up. You know, I guess these aren't really that big of a deal but I'm lazy. All right. Time.